calling the meeting to order at 6.06 p.m. Uh, welcome to all of our visitors, guests, and media, and sorry for the technical uh, issues to start off the night. Uh, this is the Board of Directors regular school board meeting for Monday, April 22nd, 2024. Um, and we're going to start tonight off with the board and administrative roll calls. Mr. Felt, here. Mr. Burns, here. Ms. Danielson, here. Ms. Schultz, here. Ms. Getzko, here. Ms. Nathan, here. Mr. O'Neill, here. Mr. Schuler, here. Mr. Hennon, here. Mr. Girton, here. Ms. O'Connell, here. Ms. Payton, here. Ms. Dimler, here. Mr. Veal, here. Mr. Szymanski, here. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. There were no public comments prior to the meeting tonight. Uh, so do I have a motion to approve the attached agenda and addendum? So moved. Second. Motion made by Ms. Nathan, seconded by Ms. Schultz. Any further discussion on the agenda? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Motion carries. Item three, the consent agenda, which includes the school board minutes from the March 18th, 2024 meeting, the personnel consent agenda, and the business consent agenda. I'll second. Mm -hmm. Motion made by Mr. Burns, seconded by Ms. Danielson. Any further discussion on the consent agenda? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Motion carries. Moving on to the long part of the <laughs> evening tonight, the recognitions, presentations, and showcase. Mr. Szymanski, it's your show. Oh, yes. We will try to go as quick as we can. Uh, in March, we recognized our winter athletic accomplishments, and tonight we plan on recognizing our activities accomplishments, and we had quite a long list of accomplishments over the winter. But first off, what I'd like to do uh, just publicly is just recognize one of my coaches who has decided to retire, and that is uh, Coach John Rossold, who coached a number of years, just reading off and compiling a lot of his statistics over the last few years. It's really kind of remarkable. Taught um, for 38 total years, 37 of them here in Watertown Mayor, coached football for 33 years, coached combined boys and girls basketball head coach for 30 years. 26 of those years uh, head coach of the girls basketball team. Um, ended up with a combined 501 co uh, coaching victories which is remarkable. Um, Conference championships in 16, 17, and 18, so three of them there. And I, I won't read all of it, it's on our, our website, but just some of the things that were really, that stood out to me is when you take a look at the combination of 12 conference second place finishes and then three conference first place finishes, that using my math is 15 and coaching for 26 years, which meant just about every other year we were battling for the top spot in the conference. And what really stands out about that is for a big chunk of that time, we were competing against Waconia, Orono, Delano. That was six of our conference games right there. So it, it's a big credit to Coach Rossholt. It's a big credit to all the, the young ladies that have gone through the system. We've had a number of tremendous athletes. But I just want to take a, a moment and recognize uh, Coach Rossholt deciding to call her quits and has retired and now we are in the process of a new girls basketball coach so we're just starting that process now so that will be exciting and hopefully be able to report on that sometime soon when it comes to who our new hire is but with that being said back to the fine arts and at this time bring up Lori Sealing to talk about mock trial good evening I'm Lori Sealing I'm the teacher coach of the mock trial team. This is Patrick Neaton, who is my attorney coach. <laughs> and then we also have Sarah Soli as our assistant uh, coach, who is not able to be here this evening. Um, I would like to, well, first of all, we were incredibly lucky to win the state tournament this year. And we're going on to the national tournament in Delaware in about 
a week and a half. It's coming up really fast. And so we actually have a scrimmage with Oregon this evening. And so we're going to be introduce our students and take off right away to go do a virtual scrimmage with uh, them so that we can be ready. Um, all right, I'm going to introduce the people who were not able to make it. You know that at Watertown Mayor, our students are so busy. And all of these people have other conflicts tonight. So I'll real quick go through those people. Eric Washburn is a first year junior. He was an attorney for us this year. Lincoln Chinsey is a second year attorney. He's uh, a junior in high school. And he uh, will be competing with us, but he's not here right now. Eliza Rowan is a sophomore. It's her second year on varsity. And she will be, uh, she's golfing. And she won't be competing this evening. Then Ella Hunkins is a junior. It's her third year. Ella is actually our all state witness a year ago um, in the state tournament. And then finally, Nathan Behrens is a four year mock trial participant um, on our team. So those are the people that were not here. Now I'm going to embarrass the people who are here. <laughs> All right, I'm going to begin with William Mant. Will, come on up. Will is a first year freshman. And he plays kind of the character roles. He uh, had an unusual, he was a fisherman in the regular season, and now he's going to be a big Hollywood celebrity. Um, next up is, stay here, Will. Um, Jack Jewison. Jack is our. Jack is a senior, but it's his first year in mock trial. He's an attorney, has done a great for, job for us, and we wish he had come out a little bit sooner. All right, I think she'd like to move that way. All right, thank you. Next up, Lonnie Gilbert. Lonnie is a junior, but it's only his second year in mock trial because he spent last year in Germany studying over there. But he returned and is on our varsity as an attorney. He's been a witness as well, just does a great job, does both sides of the case for us. All right, next up is our junior, Natalie Johnson. Natalie is a junior, third year. She's done both witnesses and attorneys, and we've kind of think we've fit her into the witness spot. So now, oh, Owen, I'm going to embarrass you. Owen Condon, come on up. Owen what is a uh, senior. It's his second year. He was not able to participate with us at the state tournament. So we, uh, he was not a part of that team because he was busy starring in the play um, and had other uh, things. But it is his second year. We appreciate that, too. All right, last up. Um, next, Riley Delaney. Riley's a sophomore. Second year in mock trial, and Riley was our all-state witness this year. And finally, Kate Drahos. I'll try to say it correctly, Drahosh. When Kate was a freshman, she said, Draw hush. Now she says it draw hush, and I'm adjusting. All right, so Kate is a senior. Kate's been on the mock trial team all four years, done an amazing job for us. She was our all-state attorney as a junior, and now, again, as a senior, we are really going to miss her. That's our team. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Yeah, I can give it to you. I can give it to you. Thank you. Good luck, guys. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Before they leave, quickly. Yes, because Jack, Ms. Ms. Yes, half of them have to leave. <laughs> but be here again. You'll notice a few repeat faces. <laughs> <laughs> Our students are involved in a lot of things, and that's a great thing. Um, so it's been a great year so far for BPA. We started the year with only four returning members. Most of our students last year were seniors. And we have one of the biggest chapters that we've had in a long time this year, which is a great thing. They've done a great job recruiting. And to have that many new students also do so well at state, and we have so many students going on to nationals, um, that's also really exciting. I'll recognize first the students that are not here. Um, Henry Janakula competed at state in open events. Mara Elg competed in podcast production team along with Jalen Matthews and Madeline Muchko and Miranda Stifter. Miranda also competed in prepared speech. Nick Johnson competed in open events. 
Evan Jewison was first place in computer modeling and was on the first place parliamentary procedures team. Adeline Berman was on the first place parley team. Kate Hazy was on the first place parley team. Luke Jewison competed in personal financial management and was on the first place parley team. Paul Leitner was also on the first place parliamentary procedure team. And Eli Hamburger competed in business law and ethics and parliamentary procedures. Lindsay Penagor uh, competed in entrepreneurship. She was a finalist and uh, was on the second place parliamentary procedures team. And Ava Russo uh, competed in presentation individual and she was on the second place parliamentary procedure team. Now for the students that are here. <laughs> Jack Jewison. Jack was first place in, I have to look at the list, Jack, for all of your awards. Yeah. First place in Fundamentals of Web Design, first place Parliamentary <laughs> Procedure Concepts, and was on the second place Parliamentary Procedures team. Lonnie Gilbert. Um, Lonnie was, I have to find you on my list, Lonnie, first place Parliamentary Procedure team and fifth place in Parliamentary Procedure Concepts. Kayla Barnhart <laughs> competed. Caleb competed in advanced interview skills and was on the second place parliamentary procedure team. Owen Congdon. <laughs> Owen competed in business law and ethics, was on the second place parliamentary procedure team and fourth place in parliamentary procedure concepts. And Ava Hewitt. Ava competed in advanced interview skills and was on the second place parliamentary procedures team. So 13 of our students are heading to nationals May 10th through the 14th in Chicago. Cool. Nice. Good job, awesome. guys. Awesome. Congratulations. Thank you. Best of luck. Good job. Good luck, guys. Thank you guys for coming tonight. Thank you. <laughs> Last, I'm here to speak about Kate Drahouse again. You can come up here really quick so I'm not alone. Uh, just really quick, Kate is one of our captains and our seniors. She is absolutely, as you can see, she's in many things. So she's a wonderful, wonderful performer and outstanding speaker. This year, she was the Wright County Conference champ and Section 4-H champion, which led her to being uh, a participant at state. She took second in state, and that is a Water Tomeyer speech record. We've never had someone go that high in state. Uh, she is also on the Minnesota State All-State speech team because of her record. And Kate was one of the first people who joined speech when we opened speech up to the sixth grade. So she's actually been in speech for seven years. And in that time has been a uh, conference champ twice, uh, been a sex section competitor three times, and has placed in the conference overall almost uh, every year except sixth grade because you can't. So <laughs> she's pretty much amazing. And uh, our team is going to miss her leadership. And so I am very pleased to uh, recognize her in front of you guys tonight. Yay! Did you need a picture? Oh, I'll get her. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> One, two, three. One, two, three. Back three. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Well, thank you guys for coming tonight, and it's great to see that side of our school. Mm -hmm. yes. uh, all the state champs, all the second place. Very impressive. Very impressive. Uh, moving on to the action items. Item A, uh, acknowledgement of donation contributions and fundraising. Mr. Schuler. Mr. Chair, I'd like to recognize tonight uh, a number of donors and um, who they're donating to and the amount um, that they're donating. Tetra Pak is donating to robotics, uh, safety glasses, goggles, and gloves. Mayor Baseball Club donated to Mock Trial, uh, $6,000 uh, for their national competition, which we just saw and heard from. Lions Club as well, a uh, very generous donation of $3,000. 
um, as well as another $5,000 donation um, below that. So um, 8,000 total there from the Lions Club. Uh, Gritter Construction, uh, also a mock trial for $1,000 uh, towards their national competition. Liberty Diversified International uh, to the Wellness Committee uh, for $25. Knights of Columbus also contributed a mock trial for their trip, uh, $1,000. Uh, Ronna Ritter uh, to BPA for $25, it's their national uh, competition. And then the Lions Club again uh, to BPA, which we just saw that group, uh, again $1,000 for their national competition. So uh, very, very generous donation uh, from many within our community and some outside of our community. So mm -hmm. very nice. So thank you to all those donors. I make a motion to approve all donations, <coughs> contributions, and fundraising. Second. Have a motion made by Ms. Danielson, seconded by Mr. O'Neill. Any further discussion? Uh, just want to say thank you again for everyone for donating to the school and for our, the events, and I'm sure the kids are going to have a heck of a time out in Delaware. <laughs> um, with that being said, uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Motion carries. Uh, moving on to item B, second read of the district policies requiring annual review. Superintendent Schuler. Uh, as you recall, last month, um, Mr. Chair, we brought uh, these policies as a, um, for a second read, coming back this month, um, as we had to do some just fine tuning. Um, there had been some changes in terms of the protection and privacy of pupil records, um, so we just worked through our, our legal and our um, MSBA representative on that to clarify and again worked um, with our policy committee to, to work through that. Um, the biggest piece there again was just releasing uh, of, of parent um, and student data and um, again it's very restrictive as you can see in the policy. Um, <clears throat> that has really uh, been limited. Um, so again, uh, taking away uh, the right to access student's home address, telephone number, email address, or any personal contact information as directory information. So uh, again, just to solidifying that, uh, the policy committee was very firm on that as well. And um, so that was the biggest change there uh, in terms of changes to policy. Uh, the other policy that probably saw the most significant changes was 524, and again, that is the uh, Internet Acceptable Use Policy. Uh, the green that we talked about last time stayed the same, but those are the recommended changes uh, from our technology um, team, and uh, Dustin and Brittany um, worked through that, as well as Mr. View um, as well, because some of this uh, goes into the language of some of the software that our students use and that parents are, are uh, given the right to know what their children are having access to in terms of school uh, online curriculums. Um, so that also was um, updated to um, better meet today's um, needs. So asking for approval. And obviously once, if these are approved, colors go away, the changes stand Correct. for another year or three. <laughs> yep. And the policy committee has reviewed all of these. Okay. Uh, I'll make a motion to approve the second read of those 500 series policies. I'll second. Motion made by Mr. Felt, seconded by Ms. Getzko. Any further discussion on those policies? All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Motion carries. Item C, Resolution 2419, Ms. Rader and Mr. Schuler. Uh, Mr. Chair, again, board uh, tonight, uh, we bring to you the resolution uh, for discontinuing and, and reducing educational programs and positions. Um, the list in front of you was the list that we presented to you back in March um, at the March board meeting in terms of <laughs> uh, of positions and programs. Um, that has uh, essentially stayed the same. Uh, there have been no changes to that. So uh, tonight uh, we are asking for your approval of, of roughly about $430,000 in reductions um, for next school year. And, and just for, for knowledge, the Finance Committee did meet. We have kind of reviewed all of these again. So we've met the last couple of months to, to kind of further flesh out these items and, and just making sure that is in the best interest financially of the district, uh, throwing other ideas out there, you know, just trying to think of different avenues where we can, you know, be better align the budget. Um, yeah, so. 
Um, I just have some questions, just a couple. Um, where is the elementary classroom instructor position uh, being eliminated? What grade? Do we know? Number five. Yes, uh, second grade, I believe. Nope, help me. Kindergarten for the moment. Mm -hmm. Right now we're at four sections instead of five, so okay. that's where the reduction is. Um, and then are we reducing the high school CNA program or discontinuing that? At this point, we're discontinuing it. Okay, so does that need to be rewarded? Or no? It says reduction. Because it says reduction of high school CNA program. Well, it's a reduction, but we can always bring it back. Bring it back. Is that mm -hmm. why we're using that particular language? I don't know if that was necessarily the intent. No. I think it just was a wording piece yeah, there, but just, it was intended okay. to be a re full reduction of the program. Got it. Yeah. Any further discussion on the resolution? No. I just would questions? like to say it pains me to do this. Yes. I don't then, like this part of the job. Nope, and, and that was something the finance committee we, you know, always have a hard time with too. Um, with that, uh, we're actually going to do a roll call vote. We oh, we need a motion first. Yes. Oh, Mr. Chair, right. if I may. Yes, Mr. Burns. Uh, I mean, these are obviously difficult decisions. Yes. Why we're here, uh, a lot of the stuff we get to do is kind of fun and whatnot, but these are difficult times. Um, I appreciate the finance committee and the work that they did and looking through the options and administration and everybody that works through this. I know there was a lot of work put into checking options and making sure we're making the right cuts in the right areas. Again, it's not fun for any of us. We don't want to have to do this, but it's, it's part of the job and part of what we have to do. Um, I think these are uh, as good of decisions as we can make with the information that we have now and I'll set, continue to set the district up for good health in the future. Um, so therefore, Mr. Chair, I would move approval of resolution, resolution 2419. And I'll second. Have a motion made by Mr. Burns, seconded by Ms. Nathan. Um, and before we do any vote, it is going to be a roll call vote. Um, Ms. Hewen is actually going to administer that roll call vote. Um, saying aye signifies you're, sounds bad, in favor. Um, and a nay is the opposing to the resolution. So, uh, Ms. Hewen, you can do your roll call vote by random. Um, Hunter Felt? Aye. Jim Burns? Aye. Erica Schultz? Aye. Katie Jo Danielson? Aye. Heidi Getzko? Aye. Lisa Nathan? Aye. Jeff O'Neill? Aye. Uh, roll call vote was 7-0, resolution passes. Um, item D, resolution 2420, uh, Mr. Schuler. Yeah, Mr. Chair, in, in terms of um, an, another resolution, we're asking tonight to um, terminate the position of two non, uh, or non-renew, um, two probationary staff who are a part of these reductions that you just made. Um, Mr. Mark Mentz and uh, Ms. Heather Prodal. Um, Mr. Mentz is in the English Language High School program, um, and Ms. Prodal was a kindergarten teacher this year. Um, so at this point, um, again, they are probationary, um, but we're asking for board action to, to um, non-renew their contracts for next year. Motion to approve resolution 2420. And I'll second. Have a motion made by Mr. O'Neill, seconded by Mr. Felt. Um, same rules apply. We're going to do a roll call vote, administered by Ms. Hewen. Jeff O'Neill. Aye. Lisa Nathan. Aye. Heidi Getzko. Aye. Katie Jo Danielson. Aye. Erica Schultz. Aye. Jim Burns. Aye. Hunter Felt. I know. Aye. Such a good teacher. Uh, vote. It was seven to zero in favor, motion passes. Item E, tenure status of teachers, Mr. Schuler. Yeah, uh, Mr. Chair and Board, this is uh, something we missed and we apologize uh, from our end in terms of granting tenure status 
to teachers that uh, would have been tenured at the end of last school year. So at the end of in June, we should have brought this to you and, and for approval, slip by us. Um, but tonight we'd like to make up for that and bring these teachers back for a formal um, board approval of their tenured status. Um, uh, I'll name those individuals off. Uh, it's Kaylee Alger, Angela Cardinal, John Hartog, McKinnon Aylens, um, Casey Fales, Nathaniel Nordberg, Jenna Olson, Miles Ostat, Jana Schluter, and Melinda Young. Um, so we'll bring another group um, that'll be tenured um, back in June. We're planning for the 23-24 school year staff that are, will be gaining their tenure status. So again, this is a group that uh, we should have recognized last year, um, but we did not, so we're asking for that tonight. I'll make a motion to approve the tenure status of the teachers for 22-23 as presented. I'll second. Who's that? Uh, me. Right. Unless somebody else cool. did. Oh, sorry. Have a motion made by Ms. Getzko, seconded by Ms. Danielson. Uh, any further discussion on those tenured status? All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Motion carries. And we bring back the next group you said in June. Sorry. June board meeting. Yep. Correct. Yep. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Item F, the Watertown Mayor Athletic Activity Fee Schedule for 24-25. Mr. Schuler and Mr. Samansky, if we have other questions. Yes, we are asking again for um, the approval of the athletic uh, fee schedule, which we do this annually. Um, you can see there that we have kept um, everything, I believe, the same. Nothing has um, been adjusted. Um, again, some of the reasoning behind that, as uh, Mr. Szymanski, um did a, a crosswalk uh, looking at all conference schools, one of the things that we noticed on the west side of the Wright County Conference is we're certainly the highest um, in our fees, athletic and activity fees. So um, certainly we could have looked at this as a budget reduction potentially, but I think given that we were at the highest uh, of any west side school, um, it felt like it wasn't the right time to, to do any increases. Um, our school kind of looks a lot more like the uh, east side of the conference, so some of the bigger schools is where we kind of fall in line. So I think that just raised some red flags, for at least for this year, as not increasing. Um, again, we've noticed a little trend, too, on, on maybe some declining participation rates. We didn't want this to be another factor for students not to participate in terms of raising their fees. So um, I guess that was some of the justification that we, we had. As you notice, the one that we did eliminate, um, and that happened even like last mm -hmm. summer, last spring, was the parking fees. Um, you know, it, it was a matter of, and uh, Mr. Hannon can probably speak to this more clearly, but just a matter of enforcement and collection was a problem um, over time. And um, for the amount that we collected, um, just didn't feel like it was the right thing to do. And, and for equity reasons or other purposes too, it just seemed like it was time to maybe revisit that. So um, high school staff made that decision to um, pull back on parking fees. So um, other than that, everything stands as um, shown here on the sheet. I make a motion to approve the athletic and activity schedule for the 24-25 school year. I'll second. Have a motion made by Ms. Danielson, seconded by Mr. Felt. Any further discussion on the activity fee schedule? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Motion carries. That ends the action items for the evening. Uh, next up is the ICS update. Mr. Ziemer. You can hit the next slide already. So just giving an update on the parking lot projects. So we'll start off with the CLC. Um, this shows a uh, few board meetings back what we had talked about, uh, that we'll be repaving all of the areas and then adding that area along the south of the building. Hit the next slide. So since then, we've submitted for review to uh, the Minnesota State Plumbing Department, which we've made it through that review process. Uh, right now, we're making it through the Carver County Water Management Organization's um, review process. Um, not as easy as the others. Uh, they obviously come back with comments just about every time. 
but the red box signifies uh, the original plan to put an underground retention system in. Uh, we were going to do that one to save real estate and not have an open pond on a, a site that has small children on it. Um, a lot of hurdles were or are have been put in front of us with that process. So um, we had many meetings with them, ongoing meetings, and have come to the realization that they are likely not going to easily approve something that keeps us on our schedule for this summer uh, without going to a surface solution, which is to the left there. So uh, we will be eliminating the underground system uh, and extending pipe all the way down the north, relative north side of the site, down to an initial pond that actually has iron mixed into the sand to remove phosphorus. And then it'll go to the next basin, which infiltration to groundwater will occur. Anything that overflows that will go to the ditch that along, goes along the road. Um, it's believed that this is a wash, if not a small credit to the project, because the underground system is actually fairly expensive to execute. It actually should also help our schedule uh, overall, because we don't have to dig down 17 feet to put this thing in. So um, pros and cons of both. Um, again, waiting on approval. Uh, we just got comments or got comments back on Friday. Uh, we did talk to them today, and it sounds like the comments, although there is quite a long list, sounds like they're pretty minor actually. They're just looking for clarification of some details and materials. And uh, Bolton and Mink is working on getting that back to them right now. Um, but it, it sounds feasible that we may have approval by the end of the week or early next week. So. Um, right now the contractor's on board. We don't see this delaying anything. If anything, like I said, it's going to help us out in the overall schedule. It's just a little frustrating as some initial meetings were had to let it lead us to believe that this would be a viable solution. So, uh, We also are going to, as noted on the drawing, fence the ponds uh, on the, see, be the east side so that they're not accessible by the kids as they sled down the hill. Uh, additionally, because of the pipe we have to run along the north side of the, the street there, um, we're going to move this, the baseball diamond, 20 to 30 feet to the south. Um, so it will actually provide some, for some more seating will be a good result of that. Um, there's also a small area of ponding that will be corrected along the first base line uh, that showed up during the, down, the deluge we had over the last couple of days mm -hmm. and uh, should result in a better field overall. Is the fencing on, on the baseball side? I mean, I assume that'll be a little taller than like what you'd find in your backyard just so kids aren't able to crawl over it or no? Yeah, we can definitely look at that. We could put a six foot fence up if that's okay. what's desired. <clears throat> and it's more filtration. You know, yeah, so the pond sure, doesn't grass, it's sure. not going to be standing Got water. It. The quote unquote pond does not mm -hmm. hold water for more than one to two days. The idea is that it drains. Okay. Um, again, if you get a deluge, it's going to be defaulting to the, the ditch anyway. Okay. So it never gets over a certain level. It'll ultimately be draining or okay. basically draining itself out. Uh, it'll look just like the two you have over at the high school right now, north side of the area where you park in the gravel, and then up by the softball field where we put that in for the middle school drive. Which Functions the same way. Right field by Stacy's. Yep. Right field. Yeah, okay. Yep. So if you notice that filled up the first day, mm -hmm. it was pretty full. Um, part of that was some wood chips that were obstructing the exit, but it was gone probably within a couple days. Next slide. So elementary, again, we're just uh, seal coating this area, replacing quite a few sidewalks um, around the building and some LED lighting as well. That is actually true of the CLC site as well with the lighting. Next slide. So again, same scope. I think the only difference is we're actually talking to the city, trying to resolve uh, that little strip of grass that exists between the path and the road right now. Um, trying to work with them to get a solution to get that paved so that it's not a, a constant maintenance item where you're, you're pushing snow and then you're not left with any grass. And, and Mr. Zimmer, spring. you're talking by the entrance. Yeah, actually down by the crosswalk. Go up, right there. Mm -hmm. And eliminating the path through the center of the... Correct. That's probably the biggest change, that grayed out area. That'll eliminate the path so we won't have kids walking through. Because along Paul is just wood chipped right now along the sidewalk, correct, or no? Like, is that... 
landscape. I can't it's, think. There's a um, asphalt path that runs. Yeah, in yeah I know there's the path, but the like there's, there's shrubs and yeah, there's yeah. another right, base connection. Is, like to there's the no grass area. in between there. Right. Well, I don't sure think exactly so. Where you're Along Paul Avenue. So like, along like here. Along there, yeah. Yep. There's an asphalt trail and there's like oh, wood chips. Yeah, wood chips there. and shrubbery. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. So you're can, so yeah. the piece down there is what well no, because that looks like there's grass it's on the to the other right side. There's a little bit of uh, right here. That's the shrubbery, shrubbery. and stuff. Oh. Mm -hmm. So this trail so, will get eliminated. Yep. We're gonna take this island away, take that crosswalk away, push kids down and over. Okay. Rather than walking through here, the concern is because yeah. the grass gets up to about four feet in some yeah. areas. But you're it's, talking about this strip of grass along the road, right? Along nope. is that Christie or right here. No, ju oh, no, just the, the, that. The, the strip. Oh, the strip. Right. That strip. Yep. Yeah. See how it's so thin right here? Yep. And then it widens out here on just because of snow plowing, it pretty much rips the grass right off. Got it. So it's an establishment, it's weeds, it's mud. Okay. And, it's and city, that's where kids are being dropped off right now. So they're sidewalk. crossing over yeah. a muddy area to get on. Got it. So we have to get them to agree to pay yeah. to I see. Okay. Yeah. So, it's pointless to be there. Yeah. Next slide. Mm -hmm. Next slide. Uh, so middle school, high school, again, this is the existing condition as it exists between the middle school and high school that we're looking to improve with part of the improvements. Next slide. This was the concept, and then next slide is the actual solution that we're gonna implement. So slightly different with how the sidewalk interacts with the district office entrance, uh, but for the most part, it's the, the same solution with the idea that parents drop off and they're turned back around and exiting on the north side of the building so that they're not confusing traffic flows between the high school uh, as those uh, students and parents are entering there. Um, and then also provides for a semi to come off of 25, enter the site, and then back into the delivery area there. Uh, we also moved some of the parking for the district office staff, so they're up against the door now, along with custodial staff, and I think those three you know, vans that the district has will be stored over there as well. And then again, the east and west lots, for the most part, it's sidewalk work and uh, just fog coating that, seal crack those areas. <clears throat> so again, here's the, again, we'll be sealing most of this. There's some correction of the retaining wall between the two level lots there. And this then is the upper lot, right? This is west. the west, west lot. lot. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. And then looking to pave uh, most of that area that has the landscape that's uh, landscape pieces that are being pushed out by kids during waiting for buses so. <clears throat> so the west lot so the alternate that we accepted was going to add some more parking uh, again same reasoning we had the below grade system to in, to maximize our parking there uh, not have to rely on another pond um, but again just some difficulties with that uh, we looked at the north pond that exists right now looking at expanding that. Unfortunately with that there wasn't a way to do that without losing parking spots so we looked at the south and actually we have enough room outside of the 25 easement there to get the two ponds that you see there. So again same idea you have the first pond that gets the the water with the iron in the sand takes out the phosphorus moves to the next and then actually drain into the, the holding pond we have right now. It's used for irrigation of the fields. I think that's the last slide. And oh, budget, we're on budget because we really haven't incurred any payoffs yet from the contractor. He is ordering what materials he can. So at some point here in the near future, we're probably going to see a pay application. Um, but the good thing was he was able to put a hold on all the things that were being disputed. No costs incurred. If anything, there'll be credits that get put against some of these revisions that we have to be put at. So again, we're looking at either a wash or a slight credit, I think, at the end of the day. <clears throat> was there credit also for that um, that new lot by doing a different drainage field? Just the, the undergrade retention system, yes. Yep. Both, both of those is what we're getting a credit for. A little bit more pipe and catch basins over at the CLC. Actually a lot less work over at the high school because they're just creating a few basins. <clears throat> Are you guys 
um, I'm sorry, outside of the district office, are you removing that like planter wall thing? That's yes. what it looks like, okay. <laughs> Basically yeah. creating a new retaining wall so the end the sidewalk will actually meet ADA now. Yeah, so right. It'll bring you around. There'll still sure. be a, a, a stair option. Got it. It'll still be your room. So. Okay. I mean, there's some new plants that could go in. There. I know. <laughs> you could just take the ones from the upper high school lot and move them over. <laughs> I was thinking of the green ones. Oh, yeah, that too. <laughs> yeah. Be careful what you ask for it. <laughs> might end up on your front yard. Yeah. Yeah, really. <laughs> so schedule, we're still on schedule. Um, we're in that uh, big open box above the black bottom black box there. Uh, again, the review and procurement uh, area right now. So again, as soon as we get approval from Carver County, uh, we'll be sitting down with the contractor again just to see what those changes mean. Uh, we don't anticipate that them being a schedule change as he's uh, been in the conversation since day one. Um, the only area that's likely to start early as soon as we get that permit is the south side of the CLC so that we can get the temporary drop-off situation set up. And then we will definitely sit down with him again and kind of sequence around how we're going to accomplish the work. I think we've got a rough idea, but once we get final comments back, he'll be able to comment on what that all means. And we're looking at having it all completed by start of school list. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. I think the biggest thing too is just we'll have to preach uh, patience this summer. Um, it, it's especially the CLC. And I know uh, Ms. Dimler has been really concerned about the timing and, and things. Uh, the contractor is very willing to work with us, but it might be a day, two days, might be a week notice some days, um, just on different locations um, for drop yeah. off and. Pick up, so we're just going to have to be really um, ask folks to be real understanding of the situation. It's going to be a summer of um, some different drop off spaces and spots, but uh, it's going to be a really nice uh, completed project when it's done. So, I'm curious about um, at the CLC when um, you're opening up the north side to run piping and all that, is that going to interrupt any of the? Playground time, <laughs> see if nodding had playground time and that kind of stuff. It shouldn't affect the playground, it'll affect the baseball diamond for sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we're working on the exact schedule with the contractor because he doesn't have the final set of drawings to price and review schedule on. The, the goal would be to push it off as late as we can and then figure it out from there, but that, that's an unknown part yet. So. Yeah, the contractors know that the playground is a big component of the day-to-day summer, <laughs> -day summer yeah. operations at the CLC, so he's willing to work with us and maybe even creating a, a, a fenced-in path for the kids to get there. Um, and that may shift from day-to-day, -to -day too, but um, it's been very clear to him that, yeah, that's a high priority, so. And as Darren mentioned, I mean, the, the, it'll be, this is gonna be a phased effort just based on what's going on at that building, so. Mm -hmm. It could be one paved area, we move the fence over, and now the kids have a longer path, but they're still getting there safely outside of the work. Sure. <clears throat> Anything else for Mr. Zemer? No. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, strategic plan update, Mr. Schuler. Yeah, this month uh, we are moving forward uh, with our communication, and our communication is um, our people. Uh, as we are getting into um, our survey time frame, uh, we're meeting actually tomorrow to begin the process of finalizing our survey. As you remember, last May we sent out our first survey uh, of parents, students, and staff. We had about 260 parents that responded. We had about 100 staff that responded and about 820 students that responded to our survey. So again, that was the information that helped us drive our, our visioning card and, and kind of showed us where we were in terms of rating. Now we've got a baseline. We'll kind of see where those results come in, but we're looking for a mid-May uh, release of that survey. and getting it, that out into parents and staff and students' hands um, around that time frame. So um, you also notice um, a communication that will come out this week in terms of people and our strategic commitment in people is just, again, we will build a culture where students, staff, family, and community engagement and satisfaction are a priority. So again, that's our, our, our specific commitment there. So um, yeah, we're excited to get that survey um, firmed up and get ready for uh, another round, encouraging people to 
get that participation rate up this year. Awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, administrative reports. Starting off the night with Mr. Hennen. Well, good evening. Uh, just a few things. You know, one, I, you got this chance to see it tonight with our greenhouse, and, and just I think we're starting to go more towards, you know, they talked about greenhouse management, just that a lot of our kids are meeting more career based stuff. And one of the things I know I talked to you probably maybe a month ago about that grant we got for that apparel you know the printer so that we've had a few kids actually start and it's been a pretty good experience they've had a um, you know they're working like with how they're on branding and with the county and graphics and today they actually I think they're on like their hunter t-shirt already and it's kind of a cool thing to see more and more of that happening because again it's that kind of that hands-on you get to see the greenhouse tonight and I think that's one of the things we had a visitor from uh, Minnesota Rural Education Association he just toured our school and he was blown away again just by all the, the amounts of like hands-on opportunities we got and then just all the, the support we got too with everything so just wanted to share that because i think it's pretty cool what our kids are doing um second update is you may have seen the personnel consent agenda we did at one of our counselors is resigning but the, the positive is we did post it we end up having um six applicants we renewed five we had three really good ones and committee found what we think is a great fit coming to us she's got five years of experience and, and I think we're pretty lucky given that there's not a lot of them out there but um, we did replace that so that I'm sure that'll be on the I think the next month's agenda but uh, feel really good about the replacement um, so again it's 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 a loss to, to have McKinnon leave but I think the, the person replacing will do a really good job and then lastly just you know, we're down about, you know, for seniors especially, I think about a month of school, and, and the next month is pretty crazy. And just want to kind of recognize some big events and some things coming up. This Wednesday, we have Students of Excellence Banquet in St. Cloud. Uh, we have four students being recognized, uh, Maddie O'Neill, Jack Jewison, Ella Getzko, and Brent Damian. Uh, pretty cool event. I mean, there's like 35 to 40 schools up there, and they, they send four students up there, up to four students, and just a chance to recognize um, our students, uh, prom is this Saturday, and it's obviously always a, a big event. Senior Athletic Banquets, May 1st. The Senior Awards and Scholarship Night is the week after, May 8th. We did have over 60 of our seniors apply for a scholarship this year through the foundation, so that's, again, a good, you know, so that's about 60% of our kids. So that was good, again, to see that. And then, obviously, graduation is coming up on May 24th, um, and then, again, be here before you know it. So... Kind of because yeah, in this next month, this is kind of a especially for our seniors, kind of a blur because there's just a lot of stuff going on. So, any questions? Do you want to note the mock car crash cancellation? Yeah, so we didn't, we haven't sent a lot out, but they were attending to the mock car crash this Friday. We we're working with the fire department, but in talks with them, I don't know if you've seen the forecast, but it's a 90% chance of rain Friday. And <sighs> given the fact that they were going to have so many people come take out work and things like that, I just didn't feel right to wait till Friday morning. And then, given that we, you know, the, the forecast does not look good, uh, maybe it'll change, but it, we just didn't feel like it was appropriate to wait that long and I think they prefer just to make a decision today and so we you know, we didn't make it to we were gonna send out something today and I called Heather right early I'm like yeah just wait on that so and we just felt like we're just gonna wait and um, we won't do it this year we'll just try to try to do it next year but it just didn't work out with the weather so thank you thank you thank you yeah. mr. Gurton <clears throat> Good evening, everybody. A couple of things. First off, uh, just a goals update. Uh, we set a goal of 85% of our kids being capable, being proficient in reading and math. Uh, we are still waiting on data, um, and I'm pushing staff on that one, but we uh, are kind of in the midst of taking MCAs. So uh, we have quite a few kids that have not completed. I will say, though, that the effort this year from kids the attitudes have been much better just in terms of give us accurate information so we know where kids are at. So more to come on that. And again, it's a stretch goal, um, but we're going to just continue on with that. So hopefully within the next couple of weeks, we'll have Mr. Bayou will have some good data for us. Um, but that's just kind of where we're at right now. We've had more kids that didn't finish taking those assessments in reading and math than we've ever had. And according to teachers, they're just taking their time. So I think it's, it's a good sign. A couple of other things. Um, we are starting to descend in terms of wrapping up our school year. Uh, with that comes registration, master schedule changes for next year. Uh, I kind of paused on getting registration information out. 
because I was working with the leadership team and really trying to understand how to make some changes in the master schedule. The big one for next year will be what's called a WIN period in every grade level, which is an acronym for what I need and what we're doing in the middle school to support, I think it's a strategic goal with MTSS, is saying that if 30% of our kids aren't meeting a literacy or a math goal, they can't just go through the motions of going in and out of exploratory classes. They need more reading or math support. Kids that don't need that, teachers will be restructuring some of our enrichment classes. So excited about that, pushing staff a little bit out of the comfort zone, but we need to do more than what we're doing. Uh, status quo is, has not been enough for some of our kids. So um, we'll have that win period woven through all grade levels. Um, transition planning is well underway with fifth graders coming over in early May. Uh, we just selected our eighth grade web leaders for next year. We have a great group of mentors coming in. So just really moving forward with that process to get them ready for next year. Um, last thing, just a recognition piece. Uh, we, our student council, are really worked hard. We run a Pennies for Patients campaign, and so they raised about $5,000 this year, which was definitely a record, uh, to promote uh, cancer research, and was very competitive. Uh, quite a few staff, including myself, had to take some real pies to the face, uh, but it was worth it. So our eighth graders want it, though, um, and they seem to somehow figure out how to do that strategically quite often. So um, they'll be selecting a outing, uh, there was a survey that went out and get to do that as part of the celebration, but kudos to our kids, our student council, we have just a very strong leadership group this year. So, so with that, that's about it. Any questions? Thank um, you. What oh. grades currently have when? Do, is there, there so right now, grades? fifth grade has a I win period so and sixth grade does as well. Okay. So we're strengthening those two and then we're bringing it into seventh and eighth grade. Okay. So. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. O'Connell. Good evening. Um, with regards to learner outcomes, on April 1st, we had a PD day. So all of our K3 teachers, our special ed teachers, and two of our fourth grade teachers started volume two of the letters training that we've talked to you about before with the science of reading. Um, this one was focused on oral language and vocabulary. And so that was a really great thing to start that second journey of that that will continue through next school year and wrap up in November. Last Friday, we held our last Royal Recognition event of the year, recognizing students for being caring, safe problem solvers. We connected it to the Olympics and talked about finishing strong and did a torch of learning relay race without real torches. Um, that was kind of fun for having kids get the idea of keeping their light shining bright and keeping it going through the next remaining few weeks of the school year. And then upcoming events on Saturday, May 4th, we'll have our Strides for Students event from 9 till noon. Um, the PTO hosts that, and they do an amazing job with that. As of right now, we've already raised over $11,000 towards our total of $25,000 that we're working towards trying to get to. Kids will be voting on Friday on incentives towards teachers, like last year we did Pies to the Face and Silly String, so we'll see what kind of things they come up with this year. There was some discussion about maybe having to kiss an animal, so <laughs> we'll see what that is. Any questions? <laughs> okay. Thank you. Ms. Denmark. <laughs> All right, good evening. So I'm going to start with our early childhood programming. And one of the things that we are trying right now, or you may have heard, is that we have an ECFE feedback survey out right now from past participants just trying to see what we can do to um, improve our program programming in our ECFE. Um, we had our Kid Stuff sale this past weekend and it was a huge success. We are down to doing it once a year. We had over 100 people waiting at the door to get in on Saturday morning. Wow. Um, we had 28 sellers, many of those were new. And of those sellers, they sold about 75% of what they bought. Um, so they are really excited about that. Nice. Our uh, preschool registration, we are sitting at about 90 for the upcoming year. And we just recently opened our summer programming. So our ECFE has, um, is going strong with our uh, 
uh, infant and our uh, one to five year old program. We've got some preschool um, camps going on and a practice preschool all open for registration. And our preschool teachers attended a two day conference a couple weeks ago that they are really excited about. <clears throat> In our child care, our registration opened in March and we started accepting contracts uh, about the first week of April. So for the summer, we're looking at about 150 children who will be here um, each day. Uh, right now, we have about 145. And during the school year, we'll have about 128. So just to give you an idea of the kids that we serve. Um, and for our facilities, um, we are accepting our applications for the 24-25 year. So that's what we have going on. Any questions? Thank All right. you. Thank Thanks. you. Mr. Veal. Good evening, everyone. Um, just a couple of things that we've been working on. Um, I think, was that parents or parent outreach? Is that our community goal or communications. Mm -hmm. um, last Tuesday evening, I went to our early childhood parent group and was talking with them about some of our things that we're doing with science of reading and some of the things that they can do to kind of help proliferate and work with their uh, little ones. Uh, although some of them were like, you know, 12 and 18 months, so I don't think they need to worry about the science of reading quite yet, but, um, but yeah, so we're working with uh, them on that. Um, some For some of our curriculum areas, we have decided, uh, as I mentioned last month, about social studies and where they're going. Uh, literally just this morning, I got the final uh, quote, so, um, and we... Uh, we're a little bit above budget, so we're gonna have to get back together with that team and just do some things. Uh, and then we have our uh, DAC meeting tomorrow evening, so we'll kind of talk a little bit more about uh, what they're recommending for purchases and then um, just kind of go over what we're gonna do probably internally to get ourselves within uh, our expectations for expenditures, so. Uh, from professional development, uh, we began our letters volume two training with our elementary team on April 1st. We have also started convening a pre-K through 12 ELA committee to start looking at what the scope of everything should look like from the time we get our children at pre-K and kindergarten all the way up through 12, what should their experiences be? So we're gonna look at that from a whole global kind of a take uh, and Bearing in mind that in the school year 25-26, that's when we implement the new 2020 ELA standards and we'll be testing on those. So we're kind of going to be looking at what do we need to bundle? Are we going to need different resources to kind of meet the needs of, of that? So it's going to all be entailed within that uh, group. And we're going to be meeting probably several times, maybe a couple times over the summer and probably several times uh, next year uh, to, to make that happen. And uh, from assessment, from the land of assessment, uh, as they have mentioned, we, I think we're probably about 80% done with our testing. We've got some elementary reading to, uh, tests to go through and then some makeup tests, uh, and then we should be done. Um, we will, I think we go right up until May 3rd, or actually even the following week, we have high school science out there. So uh, I, you know, if the stars line up right after that, I'm gonna try to get all of our data compiled and put scores into Infinite Campus so that kids can see what their individual scores are. Um, it's the worst kept secret because teachers are anxious to get those results, so I've been sharing the individual results and they've been sharing it with kids, And uh, but that's good to create excitement around that. Uh, but yeah, we'll try to get those out uh, and posted in Infinite Campus by the end of the year. Awesome. Questions? Thank you. Ms. Payton. Great. Hello, good evening. Um, our special education department um, has some exciting news to share. Um, in March, the Carver County Interagency Services Collaborative offered a one-time $200,000 um, one-time grant to fund mental health initiatives. And I'm proud to say that um, of the $200,000, Watertown Mayor was approved for three grants that came to $95,804.40. Cool. So um, although that, um, approximately 80,000 will be used to fund a smart sensory alert system for bathrooms in the middle school, the eighth grade only, and the high school, and that's to combat all the 
the vaping and TH use and to help promote safety and health in our students. Um, and then we have another approximately $1,700 um, and that's going to be used to fund the garden at the elementary school. And this garden um, will support instruction for our EBD setting three students. Um, and this grant is also multi-year funding. So, wow. um, And then lastly, we have a grant of about $14,000. And that will fund two encapsulated work nook stations. And that's to provide sensory relief to students um, overwhelmed by the school stimuli. So all the, the students who suffer from anxiety. So a huge thank you to Carver County on that those grants. So um, we are in the midst of programming for extended school year. Um, we are still in the need of hiring more paraprofessionals. So if you know of anyone, send them our way. Um, ESY, ESY dates um, are the weeks of July 8th, 15th, 22nd, and 29th, Monday through Thursday, 8.30 to 11.30. Um, Staffing-wise, we're looking for early childhood speech and language pathologist, a middle school special education teacher, and a long-term substitute high school special education teacher. So no significant changes um, for teacher or para staff for next fall. Um, changes to assignments will be given out at the end of next week. So um, thank you for your support. And is there any questions? No? I would just note too with, with the grant we received from uh, Carver County, and it was pretty amazing. We have to remember too that we're, we're competing against Waconia, yeah. uh, Eastern Carver County, and also Norwood and America. Yeah. And to get almost half of the grant dollars directed to Watertown Mayor was pretty significant, you know. And, and uh, thanks to Randy, uh, she helped uh, along with Mr. Hennon in developing the the grant writing process for the the vaping system. And that is a, that's a huge uh, piece. We we put everything in the grant we could, and they funded the entirety, uh, including the subscription uh, for the system, and, and uh, it was pretty amazing. So we're currently just working on um, uh, getting uh, the vendor to come out and, and uh, take a look at the building and, and how it's going to be installed and what have you this summer. So just again, thank you to you and, and uh, your work on that. that was well, and thank you to you as well. You helped out, and Dustin Stetsman, mm -hmm. and Amy Mand, Amy Frank, Erica Boatser and Mr. Hannon, and mm -hmm. so, oh. yeah, it was a team, team effort. Yeah. Also, the interagency provides all our funding for mental health therapists in our schools, so they're an important part of our programming. For sure. Good news. Mm -hmm. all right. Thank, you. Thank, Thank you. you. Speaking of that, when oh. is to be continued? When is that training happening? Right. It's going on right now. Okay. All right, Mr. Schuler. Yeah, thank you. Um, just a few items today. Um, we're also, speaking of um, county, we're rekindling our safe schools meetings. Um, last year, um, Katie Joe and Hunter from the board side attended those. This year, we had a harder time getting them started, but we ended up having, we're have one May meeting. Um, someone uh, new came on to the um, uh, interagency group, and she's going to uh, help us get the county side moving again. So. Uh, on April, excuse me, May 17th, I believe, we're, we're having our first one and we're expecting about 30 folks. And again, it's school staff with county staff just collaborating. Um, we invited the city uh, as well and um, other agencies. The food shelf has now um, been taken over here in Watertown, that individual's coming. Um, so we're just getting a really good collaborative group together to wrap up the school year and then start planning for doing it again next year and getting it, uh, getting its legs again, if you will. So that's exciting. A couple other things. Um, our principal group and director has been working on finalizing those change and start times. I've been kind of updating you. Uh, we are going to be coming to the board in May to give you just, again, um, to act on the fact that we're going to have to adjust uh, our start time. So we just want you to be able to give it its approval. Again, it's elementary moving up by 10 minutes to 8 a.m. instead of 8.10, uh, and then the uh, middle school uh, moving in high school to 8.15. On the opposite side, and on the where end. where is the middle school and high school start times now? You're at 8.10, eight, 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 so it's a five minute okay. switch there. And then end of the day, it's 2.40 uh, at the elementary. That's about a five minute switch there. Um, high school and middle school. High school will go at uh, 2.51. 
uh, and then middle school at 255. And again, the whole idea is to really eliminate that second phase of busing, um, which is a supervision nightmare and um, just isn't the best quality for our kids uh, in that wait time. And again, we met one more time with Cook Bus Company, Brian Cook, uh, last week and just again finalized them. We might have them come to the May boarding, board meeting if there's any questions, but we feel like we've got it pretty um, locked up and, and in a place where we think most people will be very understanding. And again, according to Brian, bus times may vary slightly, from maybe five, ten minutes, but um, what he says is they build their schedule out, um, assuming that every child's going to ride the bus. And as we know, that's not necessarily true. So after two weeks or so, those times start to be compressed back to where they really should be. So there's that fluctuation the first couple of weeks. But again, if people bear with us, uh, we'll get back on track. So uh, I think staff's really excited. I know our principals are excited about eliminating that second tier of waiting that we have to do, second tier busing. Um, so again, that should be finalized here at the end of uh, May. Um, also just a note, I've been also mentioning the two hour late start idea. Um, just to keep that on the board's radar, we have not finalized anything yet. Um, kind of piggybacking off what Mr. View talked about earlier with the READ Act and some of the requirements that we're trying to fit in in a school year. It's becoming really difficult in a lot of districts. I just saw Howard Lake did it too this week where they're looking at alternative ways to get that training in either during the school year or a late start or adding extra PD days. Um, so those are things we're contemplating. Um, we obviously know there's a big section of our staff that needs to be trained, but there's also staff that aren't a part of that, but we still need to figure out what we're gonna do with them during that PD time um, and what that would look like. So. That's the details that we'd like to bring back to you uh, in May for some feedback. Um, we're still working on dialing that in a little bit, but um, again, it's just one more way of trying to get that work in. And, and, and Joe has alluded to a number of times, I think this year is that there's just, just a lot and more than we've ever seen before in terms of training. So, um, and the work of the ELA, the English Language Arts Committee, like he mentioned too, there's just a lot going on there um, that we have to accomplish so we'll keep you updated there. And then lastly, just the city administrators um, and I, and, and possibly Hunter, I think you might be trying to join us. Um, we've been going out and visiting with our um, local city administrators and mayor in Watertown, um, just trying to get a conversation started on development and just kind of where we're where we at with growth. Obviously, as we see some declining enrollment, we want to see how they are equating that as well. And so we've had some really good early discussions. Um, uh, we invited them in for a tour, which is going to be next Monday, a week from today. So they're going to tour all three, all four of our facilities so they get a feel. I think so often when they meet with builders or potential builders and new families coming into the community, um, I don't think either of them have been in our facility. That's not a uh, blaming anybody, but for them to have a really good eyes on, like this is what our facilities look like. Um, I can share this with families moving in or developers. Um, we just think it would be really uh, beneficial for them to be able to speak to it if they've seen it. Mm -hmm. We think we have some pretty outstanding facilities um, across the board. So um, we'll be doing that on uh, next Monday and continuing that conversation. I know the, the Watertown City Council had a special meeting last week, I believe, just to talk specifically about growth in the conversations that we started a few weeks ago with them. Um, so I'm trying to get the conversation moving. I also want to thank Kyle Jarvis from the Chamber of Commerce, who's been really good in terms of just keeping that discussion going. Um, certainly the Chamber's in tune to growth and development and, and retail in the community, and same with Mayor, um, just trying to get that conversation going. I don't know if you had anything else to add nope, to that. No, nope. just very good conversations and yeah. you know, it's good to show it off and yeah. try to bring in the more builders, make more of that I mean, family-friendly housing. Yeah. And lastly, just one last point, um, just 
Good. Uh, we had a really nice evening last night. Uh, Mr. Burns, uh, as a uh, FFA alumni member on the board of the state FFA alumni, uh, that we were able to recognize Russ Runk. Russ Runk, a former teacher here and obviously a big advocate of our FFA program. Uh, also, mock trial, uh, or not mock trial, uh, yes, mock trial. He's no, a parliamentary, a parliamentary shoe, thank you. Um, just a really cool ceremony last night um, at uh, Mariucci Arena um, to recognize him and moving into the uh, FFA Alumni Hall of Fame. So, well deserved honor. And, uh, Mr. Burns got to go up on stage in front of Hundreds, thousands of, of FFA, tens young of FFA thousands. members. Yeah. He's yes. so used to that. Like he, he goes yeah, out he every time, right? <laughs> he was a natural. Uh, no. Yeah. <laughs> Very nice. My Thank people. you. Yeah, yeah. yeah I know. <laughs> Everybody knows him. Yeah. Don't you know who I am? Yeah, right? yeah, uh huh. Yeah, that's the way it is when you go there. Uh huh, it's right? Like, I know. Yeah, right. I'm pretty sure he has a chair that has his name on it. <laughs> I'm a big deal. <laughs> Any questions for Mr. Schuler? All right, uh, then moving on to board member reports. Anybody have anything since last month? Southwest met uh, last Tuesday, and uh, the biggest announcement of the evening was the fact that uh, Darren Kermis, our, the current superintendent from Southwest Metro, is retiring at the end of the school year after 18 years. So. Uh, Good news for him, sad for us. Uh, he's done a lot for the district from merging the programs to creating programs, supporting the kids, just whatever we needed. He's always really been there um, for the kids. So it's uh, gonna be a tough, tough couple months because uh, now we have to find a replacement for him. So we. Uh, decide we do an internal search and not hire someone, uh, different company to look for his replacement. So we have uh, three superintendents that are helping with the search and kind of figuring out what that is and then a few um, board members as well helping out and then of course staff and parents and teachers just um, to help out with that. So um, be busy couple months. Anybody else? No, just upcoming meetings this month. Yep. Um, also notice that the, well, the April 24th Bach meeting that's on the agenda, that has been canceled as of right before this meeting. Um, <laughs> uh, so, but we have been meeting still every two weeks. Um, hopefully kind of get that pared down here as we're kind of wrapping up some of the construction stuff and as the abatement bond stuff kind of plays out. Uh, finance committee, Obviously, we've been meeting a lot more frequently. Have one in, in June here to be determined based on Lisa's schedule. And um, a couple other things here uh, for the Minnesota School Boards Association, since I'm on the board of directors for that, we have our annual meeting in May, so May I can bring back some more information on that. Uh, last couple weeks have attended phase three training through MSBA with Heidi, so thank you for signing up for that. Um, Phase four starts Wednesday. Wednesday. You're on that too? Okay. So we represent the Watertown Mayor School Board quite well. I have to watch what I say. Because <laughs> Heidi will correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> um, and, and, and last but not least, um, Wednesday is uh, Administrative Professionals Day. So I wanted to say thank you to all of our admin professionals throughout our entire building. Uh, selfishly, thank you. Heather, for all you're due for us mm -hmm. on the board. Yes. Uh, don't know what we would do without you, to be honest. You keep us in line <laughs> from the policy committee, from the notes, minutes, everything like that. So uh, selfishly, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and also a few things coming up. Uh, there's Volunteer Appreciation Week, which is actually now, this yes, week. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, Teacher Appreciation Week is May 6th, and the School Nurse Day is May 8th. So mm -hmm. I'm assuming we have stuff queued up, Lots or we'll have. Things. And yeah. then just keep in mind that our elementary school has uh, does it on a different week um, to coordinate with um, Strides for Students, or to not compete with Strides for Students. So there's okay. always a little bit of an adjustment, so don't 
And that is what I have. With that being said, is there a motion to adjourn the meeting? So moved. Second. Motion made by Ms. Danielson, seconded by Mr. Burns. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Motion carries. Meetings adjourned at 7.20 p.m.